Hello Chemistry Clan. In this lecture we are looking at the common ion effect. In the last lecture we started to describe this um, but we didn't get to any examples um, of it. So just as a refresher the common ion effect basically means that a slightly soluble solid will have decreased solubility in a solution that contains a common ion to the actual slightly soluble solid. So we see this idea of decreased solubility with a solution that contains a common ion. So, so that's the idea. It's really like a Le Chatelier type of stress. Um, and, and what I'd like to do now is go through an example of the actual calculation and calculating two different types of solubility, molar solubility, one in just water or that aqueous type of solution. Um, but then also, um, another, uh, calculation involving an aqueous solution that contains an actual common ion. So. Our example is thus. We want to calculate the different molar, uh, molar solubilities for lead iodide. Lead iodide has a KSP equal to 7.1 times 10 to the negative ninth. So we want to calculate the different molar solubilities for lead iodide in an aqueous solution and in an aqueous solution that is 0 0.02 molar in potassium iodide. So, so there's our question, right? We want to calculate the different molar solubilities. So that's what we're trying to determine. We have a KSP for the process, so we know the left half of the equation. And in one of those cases, we're looking at simply just an aqueous solution, and the other is an aqueous solution that is 0 0.02 molar in potassium iodide. And so just looking at this idea, you know, the iodide minus is the common ion, right? It is part of both of those molecules. It's part of the lead iodide, that's a solid. And then also talking about the potassium iodide in terms of the solution. So the iodide is a common ion, and, and that's where the common ion effect will be realized. So we really have two parts here, right? We have one as far as calculating the molar solubility um, in terms of just the aqueous uh, solution. And then part B, we have a very similar calculation, but now in terms of an aqueous solution that is 0 0.02 molar in potassium iodide. 
So for part A, right, we really want to realize, right, that this is a slightly, you know, soluble solid. And so our first step would really be looking at the equilibrium reaction and the actual, you know, what is KSP equal to? So starting from that slightly soluble solid, we have our lead iodide starting material. That's a solid. We're showing how it dissolves into water. And we're looking at the breakdown of that ionic lattice to give us lead in the plus two state that's aqueous, as well as two iodides that are minus one in that aqueous setup. Our KSP for this process would be equal to the lead plus two times the iodide minus one, and the iodide would actually be squared. And we have a value of that to be 7.1 times 10 to the negative ninth. That allows us to get to the second step of the methodology, which is the ice table. Now that we know the major players, we know we only have to be concerned about lead plus two and iodide minus one in terms of KSP and in terms of the ice table. So initially we're starting with the solid, so we don't have any of those in solution as far as the aqueous ions. We have our change of plus S and plus uh, 2S. Remember, if you like the X value, that's fine too. That would be like plus X and like plus 2X for that. Again, with slightly soluble solids, we tend to deal with S. And so we have S and 2S for our equilibrium concentrations of the lead and the iodide, respectively. Now we know those equilibrium constants, or I'm sorry, we know those equilibrium values with regards to molar solubility. We can substitute now back into KSP and basically saw for the molar solubility or S. So plugging that in, we have our KSP, which is a 7.1 times 10 to the negative ninth. And so that would be equal to our lead plus two, which would be S times our iodide, which would be 2S that quantity squared. And if we arrange that, we would get 4s cubed in terms of that KSP. So now we can solve for the molar solubility, which would be our constant, the 7.1 times 10 to the negative ninth, divide it by four, and we would need to take the cube root of that particular uh, ratio. And when we do that, we end up with a solubility equal to 1.2 times 10 to the negative third molar. And that's specifically in the aqueous solution. So that is part A, right? Which is basically like the example we did in prior lecture uh, of just saying that, okay, if I know KSP, I can actually solve for the molar solubility of that particular solid. And that's what we've done here in part A. 
Part B is pretty much the same, but just subtly different. So with part B, we're now talking about, you know, in an aqueous an aqueous solution that is 0 0.02 molar in potassium iodide. So as far as the steps are very much the same, you know, our equilibrium reaction, you know, our KSP, right? These are really exactly the same as we did in part A. So we have, you know, the same equilibrium reaction. And we have the same uh, KSP. The only thing that's changing here is basically the ice table. Like the idea that we already have one component of the ice table there initially. So if we go to the second step, which is looking at our ice table, again, we have the lead plus two. We have the iodide minus one. And so initially, while we have zero molar for the lead plus two, we actually have 0 0.02 molar for the iodide. And that comes from the idea that we have this solution already there, that we're adding the solid lead iodide to an aqueous solution that already contains potassium iodide. And while the potassium is not important, the iodide is, right? Because an aqueous solution of potassium iodide would be potassium plus one and iodide minus one. And therein lies the common ion. The iodide is common to the lead iodide as well as what's already in solution from the potassium iodide. So now that we know we have that initial, it's still the same type of, of change as far as plus S and plus two S. And so this is what we have now for our equilibrium values with regards to molar solubility. So the third step is still the same. We want to substitute into KSP and basically solve for the molar solubility or S. So our KSP was equal to 7.1 times 10 to the negative ninth. Uh, we have our lead which is equal to S. We have our iodide, which is 0 0.02 plus 2S, that quantity squared. Just like before, we have a K that is less than one times 10 to the negative fourth. We have starting material initial. I know that's a little bit weird because really the starting material is a solid, um, but we are starting with the starting material. I know that solid doesn't have a concentration, but from that idea, you know, assumptions. Still work with solubility. So this 2S is going to zero, right? Starting material is extremely favored. 
So there's not going to be much change from that product side. And so now we end up with a simplified version of the equation, which looks like this, where the two S's dropped out. Um, obviously, if you would expand on that square, we would have a, an S cubed. And so we definitely need to make an assumption to allow for the mathematics to um, be solvable for us. So there is our assumption. That drops to zero. And now we can solve for basically what S is. And S is equal to 1.77 times 10 to the negative fifth molar. And so that would be in basically the potassium iodide solution that is aqueous. So if we look back at our, our values, our solubility in basically just water was equal to 1.2 times 10 to the negative third molar. And again, this is for our lead iodide solid. And the solubility in 0 0.02 molar potassium iodide, that's also aqueous. Again, we're still looking at, you know, the lead iodide solid as far as that solubility is concerned. We end up with 1.77 times 10 to the negative fifth molar. So we see that we have much greater solubility in terms of just water versus in terms of this 0 0.02 molar potassium iodide. And that is the idea of the common ion effect.